I, well, for heaven's sake, this present time we're moving into this electric age is the dawn of much the greatest of all human ages. There's nothing to even remotely resemble the scope of, of human awareness and human no, no, uh, greatness. There, in there this we time. are, a value judgment. Yeah, I don't know. This is quantity. Marshall, Most first. people make their judgments in terms of quantity. Now, I'm, that's, uh, I, I'm merely saying quantitatively, this is by far the greatest human age. Uh, what ch uh, further valuations would you wish to have uh, brought to bear? Well, well I yeah. thought when you said greatest, you meant finest. That is, oh. it would be oh. biggest. more admirable than oh. the Renaissance well, I mean, Florence uh, or something. Uh, Do you mean biggest? Uh, yes, uh, we're a thousand uh, times greater than the Victorian age. In size. In size. But not in quality. I don't know. You don't know. We may not, no. be, you know, there might be some way, I mean, let, let's say if there is a good lord, it's possible he might measure these epics by how a uh, a handful of air uh, appeals to him. In other words, he might, he might take a handful of air out of one epic and say, marvelous air. Yes. He might take it out of arp air and say, you know, automobile exhaust. Contrary to what Marshall has so brilliantly suggested in all his writing, I think there are absolute standards in this thing, culture, in art and literature. And that uh, these standards, you can measure one age against another. And that we happen to have lived, no great misfortune really, we happen to have lived in what amounts to a dark ages. We're a highly integral civilization, uh, and this is what distresses people who belong to the old specialist, disintegrated one. They, they can't find a little place for themselves. Yes, but are you sure, you see, are you absolutely sure that this is the birth struggle of a new civilization? Oh, yeah. Are you absolutely sure that it's not just the break-up? Uh, no, the not just the break -up. Is See, that's what I think is perhaps the whole difference between North America and Europe, really, is that you over here do believe that. Oh. But you do, you do over here. You have a bigger stake in the old tectonic. Well, no, but we, 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 we're, we're inclined to think that all these things that you imagine to be of such enormous importance like, for instance, this thing we're doing now on our television. Because a lot of people goop at television for hours every day. You're inclined to think that's an enormously important thing. And I just think it's a sort of sign of the kind of vacuity that comes when a civilization breaks. It's like the circuses in Rome. If it had been a Marshal McLuhan then, you see, Mac Caius Marcius McClunibus. <laughs> mm? He you would are. have written That's... a great book about the circuses, and he'd have said, how's I... this new civilization no. coming? There's no medium. No. no, they had no new technology. Uh, the, um, uh, that's, uh, uh, you know, but Caesar, by the way, educated the Gauls uh, by war. As, uh, this is the approved uh, Western method of educating uh, backward aerials is warfare. And uh, uh, Alexander the Great did it that way. Uh, uh, Napoleon, I was reading a book on the Russian Revolution the other day in which the author was explaining enthusiastically that the great forward thrust in Russian institutions came from the Napoleonic invasions. Mm. And then from the Crimean War. What is happening in the Vietnam now is a great educational forward thrust from us on the war front, on the war path. It's very pleasant to think of it that way. I don't case. think, I don't, th I think it's a horribly, you know, it's like roast pig. You know what Charles Lamb's theory of roast pig? You like yes, roast yes. pig? Burn your house down. Burn your house down. Well, well, that's how that's we do where, it. Yes, and this is why I'm a bit inclined <laughs> to agree with you. But I don't think it's done consciously. I think that's just because... Oh, no, we never no, do anything no, no. consciously. No, no, no. Would you say that this North American society is basically optimistic still? Yes, and I would. European is basically pessimistic. I, in a very general term, I would. I mean, the thing is that, that because I think, and here I'm, I'm rather sticking my neck out, but I'm going to say this, and Marshall may disagree with me very strongly, but I'm going to say this, that, that you over here do believe that the environment that men create governs their nature and their lives. And I don't believe in that. I think that, that uh, this is only a very small part we are of, of what... We are of 18th century origin, and it was precisely at that time that Rousseau invented the theory that the environment was the great idea. That's right, and a lot of lo rub load of rubbish it was. Absolute rubbish. However, uh, the which nature, has produced the present chaotic nature situation. Nature as a teaching machine is now capable of being programmed by human intention. Yes, but I, you see, these, in a way, Marshall, that's only just words. Isn't no? It? no. I mean, you program it, 
like men, you mean like men program computers? You mean they put in something and yep. then the computer? But you see, that's a non. It's like, a, but it's like programming lighting levels, sound levels, temperature it's levels. Yeah, but is this exactly. a pleasant that's idea? Not life. Is this, is this a see, warm idea is, to be welcomed? The, uh, the, this is well, whether it's worth or not. My great point that I'm trying to make is that that is not life. That's a surface thing. You see. Oh. And I think that life's about something much more than that. It's like saying, though, isn't it, that disease is not just a matter of symptoms. On the other hand, if you can get rid of all the symptoms, who cares what disease oh, well, you have? Well, but you, yes, but the <laughs> fact is, the, f the simple fact is, taking that analogy, is that, that, that treating the symptoms does not cure the disease. No, but getting rid of the, the symptoms does. That wouldn't have <laughs> completely. Very often, if you get, just get, treat a symptom and get rid of it, you get another. What do you think of, about the... Uh... The, the young people who are in this hippie thing, you're, you're one of their favorite people. Are they among your favorite people? Well, I'm, I can't say that I have uh, given them too much cause for comfort, or I, I haven't uh, I done very much besides just observe what, they are, or what sort of form their behavior seems to indicate is behind their life. And I can see clearly that they're uh, desirous of a very much more rich social life involved in uh, social life, and the mere finding of little niches and jobs and so on will not satisfy them. Aren't they becoming tribalized the yes. way you say the yes. whole world is, and they are actually doing it? Uh, tribal, And they though. even use, it, use the word, don't they? Uh, uh, I don't know, but tribal uh, is uh, not a new form, exactly. Uh, but uh, post-literate tribal is a very different uh, matter from pre-literate tribal. <laughs> And uh, we're tribalizing simply by virtue of a great, much closer family, a sense of the human family. In this part of the world, you are inclined to say, now, as Marshall does, 200 years ago, printing was, in, was invented. Then, 500. 500 years ago, printing was invented. Life's never been the same since then. No, absolutely but true. I don't agree with that. I think that printing or television, all these things, they affect the surface of man. But the fascination of life, to me, is the exact opposite that I find in Socrates and St. Augustine and St. Paul, all those people who lived before printing. But uh, not before writing. Or, well, uh, if you like. By the way, uh, Socrates, yeah. uh, there's a wonderful book by uh, Eric Havelock called uh, Preface to Plato, mm. in which he, uh, he just mentions in passing that what Socrates' uh, uh, great contribution was to the dialectic was uh, uh, the uh, ability to say would you mind repeating that please mm. this kind the socratic irony the socratic questioning was a playback mm. with the coming of writing the possibility of playback came into human society for the first time <laughs> socrates was very much a product of technology yeah new technology. Well, I wouldn't uh, dispute that, Marsh. I wouldn't, wouldn't presume to dispute it. But, but what I would say is that if you, as far as I've been able, in a very sort of amateur way, you know, to read and think about the various contributions to knowledge which have been produced at different times, the thing that astonishes me about them is the huge area which is the same, which is constant. And how narrow is the area that belongs to particular environmental changes, whether a civilization is in, is in a very stable or advanced state or whether it's in a chaotic state. You know, there are two questions that you can ask about life, really. You can ask the question how and you can ask the question why. Well, now, I'm passionately interested in the question why. Well, and I'm not much interested in the question but how. What about I got the, to, but I think you are enormously interested in the question how. Remember the phrase polite society mm. uh, when that came in? This uh, historically meant a society that established its values on the word or the uh, behavior that was capable of inspection, that would bear looking at. And polite society no longer is with us because we no longer live in a visual culture. And so the values of polite society are for the, for the birds. And uh, I'm not uh, free of the uh, nostalgic uh, look back at some of those old values. On the other hand, I can see why they've gone down the drain, and I can see why new ones are forming right under our noses. And I can see why the new ones create such revulsion, total recoil.